The principal thing that people worry about is um, your residential internet service provider, so you know Comcast or AT&T, charging content providers like Google or Netflix for transporting content to your house. There are a lot of consumers are concerned about um, less choice if, if the <coughs> platforms restrict content. Um, the question of pricing is more complicated. So for instance, um, in this newest paper that I have with Nick Economides on download limits, if we say to the um, platforms you can't charge the content providers, one of the things they may turn, out, turn around and do is impose download caps on you. And usually the way they structure these download caps is you can go over the cap, but then you pay a premium for every gigabyte that you download over the cap. You can think about that as really they're essentially charging you per gigabyte. I mean, it seems it's disguised in a way, but that's essentially what they're doing. Why are they charging you per gigabyte? Well, they can't charge the content providers. And so um, it's a little bit like taxes. The government can tax you, the consumer, and say you're paying the sales tax, or it can hide the sales tax like they do in Europe and it's part of VAT, and it seems as if the firm is paying the tax, but in reality, you know, the tax is being, the burden is really shared. The question that we looked at is, um, if they use this tax, will this increase the size of the pie, shrink the size of the pie, and who are the winners and losers? Part of thinking about the pie is we'll take the platform's claims that they're also worried about congestion. Even in that case, what happens is the pie um, often will be shrunk. And the reason is just as with you know, the sales tax that you pay at the grocery store or you know, the clothing store or wherever, right, it causes you to buy less, so less gets traded. The platforms make more money but everyone else loses out. The consumers in our model actually, it's a very, they're very simple in the sense that they, um, they see the prices being charged both by the platform for access, so you know, getting service at home, and what the content providers might be charging. So what is Netflix charging? What is Pandora One charging? And so forth. And then they just make decisions as to what to buy people adjust their behavior over time, but it's always the case that at any point in time, the higher the prices, the less people buy <laughs> relative to when the prices are lower. And that's the, that's the main driver of all of this. Because people face this overage charge, what's going to happen is that the people who are selling the content are going to lower their prices. But you're not going to enjoy that because what's going to happen is the internet service provider is going to turn around and raise your access fee and take back that additional value that you're capturing. A lot of the way that economists think about some of these issues is not, doesn't take into account the fact that there is a pipe <laughs> in which this stuff goes through. So for example, uh, a lot of the net neutrality debate can be put into what's, what economists refer to as price discrimination. So you're of course familiar with this. You've noticed that the uh, large box of cereal does not cost you know, proportionately more than the small box of cereal, right? And you've noticed that when you fly, right, you get different levels of quality depending on how much you're willing to pay. What most analysis of price discrimination point out is that although it's generally ambiguous as to whether we're better off or worse off when we have price discrimination, in most models, the pie is actually made larger by price discrimination. The difference between that kind of price discrimination and what takes place on the internet is that it doesn't really matter t to me if I give you a small box of cereal and someone else a large box of cereal in the sense that I can do the both, right? I can sell different sized boxes of cereal. There's no direct effect. You know, I'm not, unless my factory's really at capacity, which is not 
likely. But in the internet, if I speed up your service, right, I got to slow someone else's service down. If tomorrow we said, look, uh, on 80, you know, let's say there's three lanes going in across the bridge, and we said two of those lanes are reserved for Mercedes Benzes. Okay, well, what would happen? Well, people who had Mercedes Benzes would suddenly find their commute much faster. Everyone else would find their commute really slowed down. Once people saw that, what would people do? They'd start buying more Mercedes Benzes, and then it'd recongest the two lanes. And so you, d you just have ultimately no real benefit because there's a fixed uh, capacity. A lot of the models that we have in economics, the price discrimination, don't, haven't really taken seriously the fact that it's a it's a pipe or there's three lanes or whatever and it's fixed. And once you do that, it's a very different story and price discrimination that is relaxing net neutrality is generally a pretty bad thing. Mm -hmm.